All right, so we're going to do two more examples with spherical coordinates before we move on to new material. Um, here's one that's um, it's, it's set up, you know, without any um, specific functions or regions written in terms of coordinates, so we have to do a little bit of thinking on how we set this problem up. Um, so, so the problem is essentially to find the volume of like an orange wedge or a lemon wedge, okay? Um, maybe not a lemon, oranges are a little bit more spherical than lemons. Um, but the, uh, so the picture that you should have in mind is you've got your, you've got your sphere. Here it is. Okay. And you've got two planes, or we can even think about half planes, that come in. and they meet. They meet at some angle alpha, and you want to figure out the volume of this region that's being cut out. So I, um, I, I did a little bit of practice before this video trying to, trying to draw this region, and I failed terribly at every single one of them. So I'm not going to try a 3D drawing of this particular region. The challenge here is mostly figuring out how we assign our coordinate system. How do we lay down our coordinates and make sense of this, right? How do we calculate this? Um, and, and in particular, we know that we have two angles in spherical coordinate systems, right? We have this azimuthal angle measured from the positive z-axis, and we have the equatorial angle that's measured from the positive x-axis. So which angle are we talking about when we think about an angle alpha? Well. Let's remember what the standard surfaces look like, right? These, these canonical surfaces that are obtained by setting one of the coordinates equal to a constant. So we know that uh, to get a sphere, right, we set um, rho equal to a constant. So the boundary of this ball would be obtained by setting rho equal to r. Um, uh, of the other two angles, phi and theta, we know that if we set phi equal to a constant, we get a cone. But if we set theta equal to a constant, we get a plane. Ah. So that's what we want, right? Setting theta equal to a constant gives us a half plane. Uh, this suggests that to set this up, what we really should be doing is we should be setting up our coordinate system like so. So we should put in our coordinate axes, okay? We'll center our sphere at the origin, as one does. There's our sphere, okay. And what we'll do is we'll take, uh, we'll take one of these two planes that's gonna come in and, and slice our sphere. Um, one of those two planes we'll take to be the xy plane, or sorry, the xz plane, right? X, Z, right? Or, or at least it's going to be the, the portion of the xz plane where x is bigger than or equal to zero, right? So that's going to be plane number one. And plane number two, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate. We're going to rotate through the polar angle, right? We're going to rotate through an angle of alpha. And that's going to give me my, my second plane. So the second plane is going to be, let's draw it and uh, let's do, yeah, let's do blue. So it's going to come out this way. Right, there's that angle of alpha. Okay. And so we've got that and we're interested in in the piece of the sphere that's cut out by these two planes. So I suppose it's going to look something like, you know, we've got this, this piece here, and we've got this other plane is going to come in, it's going to cut the sphere um, sort of like that. All right, so we, we make these two cuts. That's actually not really all that accurate, we should have passed those through there and there. All right, drawing's not great. Um, should we try to redraw it? Let's try to redraw it, let's fix this. All right, let's do it a little bit better. All 
I mean, I think we have this set up already, but, you know, I ask you to draw things, so I should try to draw them as well. Um, it's going to go through there. There we go. And the other one's going to go through here. There we go, like so. Okay, so the piece that we're keeping is going to be this, this piece here, okay? That wedge of the circle, that's what we want to keep. All right, so how do we set that up? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward, right? Now that we've got the right coordinate system, um, what do our bounds look like? Well, rho goes from 0 to r, right? For phi, well, we are going all the way from north pole to south pole. So phi goes from 0 to pi. And theta goes from, oops, theta goes from 0 to alpha. Put the alpha in the wrong spot. So here's theta, alpha. Okay, that's the setup. Those are the bounds, right? In fact, the only difference um, between what we're doing here and when we, we did the example in class of finding the, the volume of the entire ball is, you know, the only change is here, right? We're just taking a piece of it. Actually, we can do this without any calculus. We'll set it up anyway. We'll set up the integral, but let's just notice that if we wanted the whole ball, the volume is going to be, well, we know that it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so for our wedge, well, what portion of the ball are we taking? Um, the entire ball spans an angle of 2 pi as far as the theta variable is concerned, right? And so the fraction of the ball that we're taking is the angle that we're using over 2 pi. So it's this, this ratio times v. That's not so bad, right? So it is going to be equal to 2 over 3 alpha r cubed. That should be the answer. Of course, we, we do want to set this up as an integral. So what does the integral look like? And I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to confirm that you do get this answer. The integral should look like this. Theta goes from 0 to alpha. Phi goes from 0 to, sorry, to pi. Rho goes from 0 to r, and our d volume, remember, is rho squared sine phi, d rho, d phi, d theta, right? So I'll leave it as an exercise for you to check that if you carry out the integral, this should be the value that you get.